Everybody has reached this map? No? I opened it, but it's not open in the day before. Where did you copy the files? It's. Can I show you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's in the same bin? It's. It's over there, so. Yes, yeah, so the best thing to do. It's is to in put it inside that bin file. Mm -hmm. okay. That file is the mm -hmm. should I just put it in there? You can use it from there, but it's okay. easy because yeah, so <coughs> <copy it then. coughs> inside here. Yeah. The bean one. Mm -hmm. That is. Okay? You can zoom in in so you have a bigger map. Okay, everybody um, has the map. Map is this one, right? Everybody have the same map because the nation only gives you one solution. So if anybody has a different solution, something went wrong. Okay? So what you're seeing is that the black areas or the darkest areas are the most important and the least important will be the wider ones. You can play here with this K. You can have this black and white view, but you can also have the classic zonation that I was showing you. That is divided by, uh, you know, the red places are the top 2%, then this um, dark red, the 5%, the pink or magenta, the 10%, yellow 25%, blue 50%, and all of it to black 100% of the landscape mapped, okay? And you can also have this one, which is the one we're using here, this binary. It gives you just two colors, okay? Then in this error, you can make double click here. It will open a color palette to you. You can have a color like this, for example. Okay? I have a reason to choose that color. Please choose it too. Mm -hmm. And in the other one, we're putting some color like gray. Just to see the thing. So what are you seeing there? Is the top 50% <coughs> of the landscape. That's too much, right? So in the same error, if you make a right click, okay, you have uh, this menu, and you adjust it to any other value. I'll put 80. That means we're prioritizing 20% of the landscape. Okay? Again, in this error here, right click, it opens a small menu, you click adjust, and you can put whatever value you want. We are going to put 80. That means we are prioritizing 20% of South Africa. Okay? Everybody's fine with this? Good. Then, again, if you, in the map, you can do a right click. And there is a menu that says Add to Merged Map. You click there. Okay? And then in this tab, Merged Map, you'll be able to see your map. So you just added it to this tab. Okay? Let's go back to the map. That's it? Okay, so let's take a look at the map. What are you seeing? Who can explain me this map? Volunteer. I'm not sure if it's 
both those pieces we should do. What it's doing is it's prioritized 20% of the available habitat mm -hmm. for the species that you've selected and it's presenting those areas, um, the green, the turquoise green, mm -hmm. those areas in the gray green, the areas that are not selected. Exactly. It means that if you were to protect 20% of South Africa, only thinking about the distribution of these 260 mammals, those areas in uh, blue will be the best areas to do so. Okay? You've got to take a decision what are the best areas to invest in conservation for prioritizing places for mammals in South Africa. These are the best places you can have. Right? And of course, you can change it. So if you want to see the 10%, if you want to protect, ten, sorry, 10% of South Africa, you just put 90, it means that these are the top 10% areas to invest in conservation for mammals. Okay? Does it make sense to you? Yeah? Why is that? Why do you think it makes sense? These areas are really important to you. I, I don't know the reality of South Africa. So. Some of them make sense, some of them do make sense. Which do make sense? No, I mean, if we take, for instance, uh, um, northeastern side, that's your Kruger National Park uh -huh. area, the Pumpa area, where a lot of the big animals do occur. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. But then if you go back to your 80%, Sorry, but it also shows in your far western corner. Um, you have, uh, like here? Cave, that one, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is a very arid area. Mm -hmm. That doesn't really make sense to. Mm -hmm. the, the so, what could uh, be. But you're talking about large ones. Because they're all large ones, and that's the kind of hiding. What is the real big? I suppose it's kind of hiding. So what, what could be driving this result that you find strange? Mm. Mm -hmm. So that's a very interesting explanation. So if we have endemic mammals in this area of South Africa, and this uh, rule we are using, the core area, is the one that emphasizes rarity, okay? So this could be an explanation of why this area is appearing to be so important here. That maybe it's because this area harbors some endemic mammals. Okay? So, <laughs> so what we can do now, oh sorry, if you came here to runtime plot tab, you will see that performance curve. So the first graph indicates the proportion of landscape lost. So zonation starts from the whole landscape and it's re removing areas. So from the whole landscape to nothing. And this is how the average distribution of the species will fall down. Okay, so for 20%, that would be here, 0.8. We are having something like 36, 37 percent of the distribution of all species on average is being protected, okay? This is on average. You can have a species with no protection at all. We can have species with 100 percent, and this is the average for the 260 species, okay? Everybody understands that? So if you go to the folder, where the data is, are. You have a lot of output files. You can have, for example, this file. This is the figure of your priority, okay? Using the basic, uh, the classical zonation colors. And you have this file called output, in my case, output 
CA curves dot txt. Okay? Everybody find that files? Curves? Something curves? Okay. You can open it in Excel, for example. And this file contains the information so you can build your own curves. If you're not satisfied with looking to a, an average curve, you can build a, one curve for each species, okay, using this file. Let me see if I cut it up. Everybody managed to open this file? So we have the, the proportion of landscape lost from nothing to one, right? The cost needed to do that. What was the cost value we were using in this analysis? Did we use costs? Yes or no? No. So the cost the nation assume is the cost of the cell. So if you have all cells, you have about 11,707 uh, cells, okay? This is the exact number of cells you have. Then you have that blue, uh, blue curve is this column, the average proportion of remaining distribution. Okay? Okay? And then you have here a lot of columns that said it is the proportion of each biodiversity feature. In our case, the 260 species. So we have 260 columns, and this is the response of each species. Okay? The first species is the cheetah. So here you have the response of the cheetah. Another species, another species, and 260 columns, and this column, the average proportion is the average number of all these columns together, okay? You also have the minimum proportion. This is the proportion of, of the worst species, the species that are most difficult to protect. And it says zero, it's because you can't protect these species, okay? So you can use this file to build the curves on your own, with your own color, as many species as you want, using just the average, or comparing the average with a very important species like the rhino, okay, or the lion. Okay. Should we go back to the nation? Everybody here with the map? Yes. yes? Okay. Let's do another analysis. Now we're running uh, 
another simple analysis, but we'll be using additive benefit function as a removal rule and not core error, okay? So same thing, in this project view, right click, open new project, and there's a file, ah, there's not this file, right? You guys have a file called ABF? Yes or no? Yes. Yes? yes. You should. Okay. <laughs> Do you have a, a file called ABF cost? No. Uh, that's good. Okay. So, can you can you open uh, the uh, blah blah blah? Let me see. Yes. Can you open this ABF file out of the nation? Just show you something. Open this zero ABF file in your notepad. You will look to something like this. Got it? Hmm? Okay, so what you're seeing here is that you're calling zonation here, you're doing a new run, and the settings of that run is in that file. One set ABF. Hmm? I open, oops, I open this file uh, with the notepad, okay, zero ABF, open it with notepad, and there it is. So I'm calling for a new analysis using this set of parameters that are in this one set ABF file, okay? You guys should check if you do have this file, one set underline ABF dot DAT. You have the file. Okay, so open this file in Notepad again. Got it? So all the parameters of the analysis are pretty much the same. But for one thing, the first line says removal rule. And the core resonation, if you open the, param the, the run settings for the core resonation, the value here will be one. This is for core resonation. And now the removal rule is equals two. It means that we are using additive benefit function, okay? That's the only thing we need to change to run this. So, we run a core Arizonation analysis and in this running settings, you put one here. Then you go, you need to have a file, That is this one, in which you say what is the name of the file that contains the run settings, okay? So if you're just uh, changing the numbers in the file and not giving to him another name, you will eventually get confused. My suggestion is you have to build a run settings file for each analysis you do, okay? And call it the name of the analysis, for example, uh, one set ABF, so you can know that the analysis is using additive benefit function, or CA if the analysis is using core error. Otherwise, you will fastly get confused, okay? And please remember to uh, give an another output name in the file. 
Okay? So, in Zonation, that project view will open a new project and run this zero ABF. There is this, this simple analysis again, but running with additive benefit function. Double click and Q. Sorry, right click and Q.